to the most must-see podcast in Chicago history, the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. I am your boy, Logan the Machine, a.k.a. Old Man Logan, here with the trio, the guys, the host with the most, Mr. Hot Take Kenny, a.k.a. The Other KG, a.k.a. Whiskey Sour, a.k.a. Ken Gardner. Uh, I'm just going to say this right now. Uh, outside right now, it's, it's not too cold, it's not too hot. Um, it's basically about as lukewarm as they are creative and trying to push this out. <laughs> it feel like summer. It is feeling good outside. And that guy you hear over there crooning, you know what I mean? You know what time it is. Mr. Joe Freezy, producer extraordinaire, engineering, got all of that atrocious sound out of the background last week. Thank you for that, sir. Bro, honestly, uh, I do feel like something outside. I think it was like 38 degrees yesterday. I was like, nigga, I'm letting these windows down. I don't give a damn. We out here killing vibe and everything else. Felt good yesterday. Um, also, shouts out to the NMG Network for the awesome plug of this podcast. As we are growing in Instagram, also in Twitter, getting retweeted and whatnot. Appreciate y'all, man. Really appreciate y'all for real. Thank you, my bro. I work out here in these streets. I already know, bro. I'm already know. I don't know how I go, too. All right, all right. So, KG, I hand it off to you. Good, sir. Let us know where we're going on this episode. All right, well, the week that was, first we start off with Monday Night Raw, but we buried the show a lot on there. Apologies, you know, to the people that actually are fans of that show, no matter how much I hate them show um anyway <laughs> i thought matt riddle and john morrison had a pretty good match on monday night what about you dude i honestly thought um with the uh, matt riddle and john morrison i think with john morrison i see where his career is going because uh he's not really into accolades like that no more like he's not really like probably he'll probably get one wwe championship run if he like stays healthy or whatever but He's not in it for that no more. He's trying to build the new age or whatever. And I think him and Riddle had a really good match. It was very solid. Um, also on Raw, which was unusual, is Retribution, Retribution going to break up now? Like, are they going to be done now? Like, are they going to be over with? Like, is that over with? Is that the um, I, I had a bad feeling about Retribution. The first night, they came out looking like Predator Bane and Jason. And then I found out their actual ring names, and I was just like, I'm done with this. Um, you mean slap- you're not looking forward to the moment when somebody says, hey, Slappy? No. no. It's a reference it's, to Jason X. <laughs> look, man, ever since somebody said that dude, like, he poked holes in the paper plate from catering, I, I don't take that group seriously. <laughs> It's it's bad, man. It's just a it's, it's it's this might be one of the worst gimmicks for a stable since the core. We are the core. Yeah, that was a trash gimmick, but I mean at least you respected them because they had ability. Like these guys all have very good ability, but they haven't been able to showcase it. You've bar- you've buried Mustafa Ali as a leader. Because he, he got like, I think they got to win on New Day, right? This past week? Was yeah, it? well, they got, they won a match um, at some point, but they've been like trading wins and losses with New Day. I'm just not feeling this whole, I think for one, they have built no momentum for them. Uh, they I think they lost like their first match as a team, if I'm not mistaken, against the Herb business. Um, while I dig the hurt business, it didn't make any sense at the time to have like the top heel stable on Raw face off against like the visual anti stable. Like Vince, what are you doing? Somebody was like, of course, Vince. While like all this race riots is going on, he looks like the Antifa group against 
<laughs> the black stable. I think, and you know what? Speaking of the hurt business, I think the highlight of my night was watching MVP go at it with uh, Byron Saxon. That shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> you know, Byron's like the the go to dude to just like bury on commentary. Kind of like how he used to do Michael Cole back in the day. Yeah. Like Byron Saxon is like, he gets it worse. Like, like no, like no lose. They go at him, pause, bro. Like, MVP was not holding back. He was like, they about to win. Shit. Told you, told you, he got off the mic. <laughs> but, but bro, like, one, to be honest with you, I would honestly like if uh, the machine would allow Cedric and Sheldon Benjamin to show their ability more. Because the match with Lucha, Lucha House Party was not a bad match. It wasn't trash. But it was like, you're not giving them the actual time to have a really good match. Because they, they almost said they were going to lose that night, too. But still, it was like, it wasn't enough time. It wasn't enough to build a story or whatever. And you keep giving them Lucha House Party. Give them somebody tough. Like, give them somebody that they can, you know what I'm saying, to really sit their teeth into and have, like, a real beef with. Yeah, it's kind of why I wish they didn't even have this whole two brands for the tag team and two titles because our business could be feuding with Street Profits right now. I think that would be a pretty good feud. And I think like we'd see less of the shenanigans. I think mean, part of the reason why Street Profits, you see that with them other than like creative telling them to do some of the hokey stuff they do is you don't really have people, to me, they can really gel with and go back and forth with on the mic and just create that magic. And I don't really see that with Ziggler and Root. And that's part of the problem. Like I could easily see MVP bringing out the best of, uh, you know, Street Profits. That would be one of the matches that I would love to see. I would like to see Sid and Sheldon versus Street Profits. That'd be dope. Honestly, didn't we get that before they shipped them off to SmackDown? I think they might have like did like one off, like a one off match, but. It wasn't a full-on feud. I think a feud would be epic. Because if you think about it, if, if, I, if, I really do, if I really do think about it, those two, one, Shelton is a jerk. And he's becoming like a, a huge jerk. Like even when, he, when he's getting tagged out of matches or whatever. And then, um, what's, what's my man's name? I just said. Said. Sorry. Say Alexander's next. He a future Triple H saw it. Vince trying to mess it up, but he's not gonna fuck it up. It's not he's not gonna fuck it up. He can't fuck it up. He can't fuck it up. Cause Cedric Alexander is a heel. He's a heel. Full on dirty heel. Pause. Shouts out to Dirty Heels, by the way. But um he's a full on heel. Taking the shine, uh expecting to have a certain result because he's that good. He's a heel. If they get rid of Shelton. I think the Hurt Business might be okay. Like, they might be all right as if they pick up someone else. Now, I say that to say, what if it was like Shelton and Rico as tag champions? What if, man? What if? Who's stopping that? Who gonna stop that? Well, we kind of we touched on that in our group text. Um, you know, uh, we were talking about having said and Rico maybe as tag champs, you could have had Shelton there still in that capacity, maybe just as mid card or kind of there. They could have been his protege, if you will, to keep him. Cause let me just put this out there. The, this incarnation of the Hurt Business, I like it. I like where they're going with this. If they changed anything in that, I would just include Keith Lee some kind of way. And you eliminate MVP from having any type of match. You just utilize him as a mouthpiece. The majority of the Hurt Business can't talk on the mic. Said can't talk on the mic. He just doesn't have an imposing voice. He's a, that's, that's why they don't let him talk. As we've seen in recent weeks, he can talk. Um, same with, uh, so that would be the only change I would do with that. But let me touch back on Retribution, because I've been like the only guy in, in, in our tandem that has gone to bat for him. You can't have a monster group like the herd business, what they're they've mutated into basically, because they're actually pushing them now. You can't have them and a retribution on Raw. It's, it's not going to work. You can't, if, if both of them are supposed to be heels, uh, what's the end game there? 
you know, if this is DX and corporation, or not corporation, uh, DX and the nation, that's one thing. But it was never approached in that manner. If they were going to do anything with Retribution, they should have put them on SmackDown. And if they were going to utilize them in the mid card, if you knew you were going to put the IC strap on Big E, boom, there you go. That's how you insert that. That's how you use Mustafa Ali properly. That's how you use them in the tag team capacity properly. That's how you utilize me and him properly. That's yeah, all yourself. I think they were one step further. I would say they should have put them on NXT and they should have been the ones that broke up the Undisputed Era. I, I want to touch on that too. We are totally at the point where they need to unify the entire tag division on all three brands. I think NXT has enough depth, though. Like, they're not they boring do, but, with but their tag team division. They, they need to unify because the main two brands are suffering from not having that depth yeah. that NXT has. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, I mean, I think if the main roster just unified their spirit, they'd have enough. Where it's because like, like then everybody becomes eligible if you unify it. Like, even though Matt Riddle, for example, he's a U.S. champion, he's exclusive to Raw. If he decides to be a, in a tag team, then that means he's, he's potentially on both shows. For example, I see what you're saying, but like that, that makes everybody available to both shows if you use Unify. So although there are only like six or seven tag teams now, maybe no, you can see it. Yeah. It's eight, because when we went over it, it's eight. It's Sheldon and Sid, it's Rude and Dolph, it's Lucha House Party, it's New Day, it's Otis and Chad, Street Prop, it's Ray and Dominic, T-Bar and Mace. And uh, uh, they're on injured reserve, but they'll be back, you know, eventually uh, Viking Red. So that'll be nine. So, if you unify at least Raw and SmackDown, you're right. You don't need to touch any of NXT. I'm just saying unify it across the board because the only way for NXT to truly compete is to have uh, stars from each show, each of the main shows appearing on NXT on Wednesdays. Otherwise, they're going to keep losing that ratings battle. And I don't know if it's, you know, something where they just want to win or they don't care. They're just like, hey, this money's guaranteed to us. So, you know. USA Network, they like our relationship. They're going to give us what we ask for regardless. But if you want to truly compete, and the Ravens have slipped a little bit in favor of NXT, so they're on the come up. But NXT, with them losing talent, you know, going to Raw, going to SmackDown, this is a way you can have talent from the other brands coming, being, you know, visiting, you know, stars, I guess, or having feuds, and you're allowing the NXT talent to either appear on the Raw on a SmackDown, and that does nothing but help the product. I just feel like some of it's just WWE overload, though. And that's part of the reason why AEW wins the rating war. Like you're talking about WWE programming three nights a week compared to one night a week on cable television for AEW. I think that's and part of it. And it's actually five, bro, because they have Monday night. They got two. They, they got Raw on Monday. Tuesday, I think, is when they show 205 Live. Well, no, but I'm saying on National Cable Network. Oh, National Cable, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, they got literally a week's worth of programming, though. Yeah. So they do include all the Yeah, if you're trying to sit there and watch all of them, yeah, you're going to be burnt out. Because to to watch all that, I think, and I don't think, I I really don't think they need to unify the tag team championships. Because we never had, I I don't think I've ever really touched on this discussion. Here's why I don't think they need to unify any of the tag team championships at all. And any shit fashion for them, perhaps. There was a time when, in the ruthless aggression era, era, there was actually like tag teams, and they were getting shine and time to be able to do those things because the machine was out of the way and matches actually matter. Then when they decided to tag, do a tag team tournament and unify it, that was when their ratings were going up. The machine doesn't believe in anything tag team wise on his network. Therefore, he crowns whoever he thinks is the flavor of the month to be tag team champions for like a year. The only reason why the New Day were tag team champions for like more than a year is because they 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 were money. Either way it goes, on the mic, off the mic, they were money. They were selling mm-hmm. the perch. They were selling sales, all that other stuff. I personally think that NXT needs to be a standalone show and continue what they're doing because the way they're developing people, uh, a la Dexter Loomis, a la um, Punishment Martinez, a la uh, Johnny Gargano, um, Timothy Thatcher, uh, the, the freaking cruiserweight champion who I didn't realize had go the way he had go when he faced Karrion Cross. That was actually crazy to me. Like it was, it was crazy to see him outside in that capacity. Swerve, Isaiah, Isaiah Swerve, or whatever, Isaiah Swerve Scott, or whatever, him too. Leon Ruff. Yeah. But you know, it, it's you know, it, it's one of those things where it's a change. Like it's it's different. 
they won the last ratings war because they believed in their talent and development better than WCW is. AEW has superstar indie talent mm -hmm. who they don't really need to really develop, who they don't really need to watch over, but their bottom tier, AEW Dark is, AEW Dark is just listening to Taz be funny as fuck. That's all it really is. I just, I just watched an episode of AEW Dark and it was it was Taz being funny as fuck. Like that was it. Like Taz Taz was singing the uh Jurassic <laughs> Jurassic Express theme song. Like he was going hard. <laughs> like going crazy on that motherfucker. And that's and that's basically like that's really all it is. AEW that night is just a switch up from what it is. It's like it's like if you wanted to see like NWO, you go watch WCW. But you know WWE got it like they're Long, longevity wise, they're gonna win out, but AEW right now is just hot. That's all it really is. I don't think you need to unify the tag team division. I think you need to give them more shine. I think you need to give more people the opportunity to be able to actually be legitimate tag teams, like legitimate tag teams, and stop telling people to be different people. For example, um, you don't break up Otis and you don't break up Tucky, that's stupid. That they were actually a legitimate good ass tag team and they were your big men. And you can actually utilize them as bad as the heels or faces, especially his faces. You would need that. Yeah, but they were over. That was dumb. Yeah, they were they were incredibly over. Otis was. But really that's over. why you don't take them off NXT prematurely. They took them off NXT prematurely. Same I don't even think that's the uh, uh, street prep. But I don't even know if that's the problem. That's just Vince. Like I don't even know what his deal was with that. Or he just said, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna split these guys up," and I'm, then you don't even use Tucker at all. He split them up. He sent them to different shows. He had Tucker Carlson money in the bank for no for no reason whatsoever. The whole thing just made no sense. At this point, it doesn't make any sense for them to be like in any shape, fashion, or form to be in any way like this to be splitting them up. I think if they need more shine, you need to be able to utilize them more. Fine, you have a three-hour show, and you have one taxi match. What, what and that? that right there is a problem in itself. I mean, everybody's ragged on them about this three hours. You're asking people to watch a pay-per-view every week. And you're not even doing the three hours in an in entertaining fashion. Bro, it's, bro it's, it's, it's just a waste of time. Because, like, if you watch AEW, you get at least two taxi matches, two women's matches, and a couple, like, main event people that you want to see to do certain things and a couple promos. They consolidate that and they consolidate that time and compartmentalize that properly. NXT is it's essentially the same thing. You might get a tag team match or two. You got to get a story. For example, when we get to NXT, I think NXT this week was a really good fucking show. This week was a really good fucking show this week, bro. And I really feel like if anybody missed out on that show, oh man, please go rewatch that because that was fire this week. That was fire this week, but you know. Which show? NXT. NXT was fire this week, and not not be, not necessarily because like there was like great like amazing matches, but it's just because there's a lot of stuff that's coming up that's gonna be that I'm actually excited about. So when, when we get to that, we'll talk that we'll talk about that when we get to it. I'm excited. It's gonna be beautiful, bro. It's gonna be amazing. Trust me. If, if it's if it's going the direction that I think it's gonna go, it's gonna be. All right, so KG, before we jump into like the week any further, can we touch on this Shad Moss to WWE crap really quickly? Touch on it. Um, I'm I'm gonna give a hard no, dog. As far as my approval for this, I'm trying to understand why there are fans that actually want that. Like, what about Bow Wow says, yeah, he's money in the WWE ring. Please tell him. Please. Uh, all right. So I'll be the, the pro in this then, and I'll just be the pro in this, I guess. <sighs> if you had an unlimited amount of money, where you have where you have a, a large a large amount of money, not unlimited, and you are able to not hoop, 
You can't play football. Mm -hmm. You can't play baseball. But you can still be an athletic individual and be an athletic sport. What is there left to play? Pro wrestling. You get to work out on a regular basis. You get to be in the best shape of your life. And you get to be able to learn something and still be an athlete. If you have a large amount of money that you can throw at it, and then you can make more money if you become really good at it, which is one of those things where develop, development-wise, you can do it. And if you've been talking trash your whole life, trash, just talking shit your whole life, why wouldn't you do it? Why? If he's been, let, let, let me preface this. If he's been watching the trends and the wave, and he turns out to be a dope wrestler, we're gonna be eating cake. Is this feed them cake? Feed them cake. First, first of all, I don't like red velvet cake. Second of all, let me say this: Chad Moss is like my height, your height. He's about a buck fifty. Okay, so Darby Allen, it works for him in AEW, but people forget Darby Allen, who's around our height, our weight. That dude's also he wrestled in college, so that's why it works for him. Why he's able to do stuff? So. Because you watch Darby Allen with all the crazy stuff he does. With the risk he takes and putting his body on the line, Darby Allen can actually wrestle. I didn't. I didn't preface that, but like at the same time, it's a learned thing. It's a learned craft. It's something you learn. It's something you learn, bro. If it's something, if it's something that he can learn, if it's something he can learn, and if his skills on being able to be in random beefs with like Soldier Boy. Migos and half of like Chicago drill team or whatever work out the same way he does with wrestling. What's wrong with that? What if he just becomes, what if he just becomes a, a great uh, advocate like Paul Heyman? Are we really going to shit on Bow Wow then? What if Bow Wow was must see TV? Enzo Amore for the record was must see TV before he got on this, before he got on this whole tangent of rapping, and he became a rapper, okay? But Enzo Amore was must-see TV. We didn't want to see Enzo Amore wrestle. We wanted to hear him talk. No one, no one was clamoring to see Enzo Amore wrestle. You watched you watched Enzo and Cass because you like to watch Cass take over and them come up, and you like to see Enzo Amore get beat up. If that's if that's what Bow Wow ends up being, like if, if Bow Wow says, I attain to be Enzo Amore, he halfway there. He's halfway there, bro. He's half, it sounds stupid, but seriously, he's halfway there. If Bow Wow can talk on the mic, if it can be entertaining, and uh, if, if he learns the business and learns how to do certain things, sure, Bow Wow will probably have the job for a year or two. He'll probably have the job for a year or two, get beat up or whatever. Whatever. He's a millionaire. And then he go make a couple a, a couple grand. You know, the, the NXT, NXT contracts start out more than we make, guys. Let me just put preface that more than what no, we No, we know that. Okay. Here's the thing, though. We also, people have to also understand that just because he's saying it, he also has to go to a trial. I mean, if they're not signed and people, Ricochet didn't even get signed until, you know, Ricochet, that was his second time basically coming through. The first time he came through was years ago before he became Prince Pullman and everything, before he went to uh, Lucha Underground and all that. So they turned him down. So it's just not like, oh, I want to be in wrestling. I'm going to get signed. Okay, now who's to say he's even going to get signed? But again, bro, we always say it. Controversy breeds cash. If Shad Moss brings, brings in an audience because people want to see him fail, just like when they signed CM Punk, who is not an athlete. I hate to say this. No, no, that's why I'm jumping in. Don't you dare put CM Punk and... Bow Wow in the same goddamn sentence. Why talking about when UFC signed him? Why not? What you mean? Why not? Why not? What you talking about when you wait? What you talking about when UFC signed? Him? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, in that sense, that's you. But even then, that's kind of a bo That's kind of a bad comparison because no, it's not. You, I'll tell you why it is. Because even though he didn't do collegiate wrestling and stuff, in UFC grappling is can be important in a fight. What? Like, what background of any type of wrestling does Bow Wow have at all? That's all we're getting. And that's why I wouldn't compare it to. I'll compare CM Punk signing the UFC to 
They were talking about McGregor. He wants to come to WWE. And even then, that's kind of bogus because I don't know. I don't know what's a good comparison. I wouldn't compare Bow Wow. That's it's no comparison. Wait, wait, hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out before you before y'all knock it down. Bow, Bow Wow is what thirty something. I don't even think he's that old. I'm pretty sure he's he's, he's in his thirties. He's probably at no. He's he's he's, he's my age. He's about thirty three. Thirty three. CM Punk went to the UFC at what 35, 36, 37, 38? So I would compare. Look, I would compare be Punk about going to UFC to like, like somebody who came over from basketball, baseball, football. At least you have some type of athletic background. But see, but WWE signs those guys, so that's that's not good. That's that's that's. But that's talking. why I would compare it though. That doesn't mean it's going to work out. Still, I'm just saying. That's that's what I'm saying. But we're we're saying we're, what we're what we're saying is right now. The premise is it's no. We don't want Bow Wow to be in WWE. Or we don't want Bow Wow to be in the WWE. But I'm what saying, what does Bad Wow bring to the WWE? Do we know why Bad Bunny is on WWE television? Bad, uh, Bad Bunny is, is is his songs are selling billions of upon billions upon billions of streams. Right. That's why he's on WWE television. Right. Nobody's watching Roll Bounce. Nobody's listening to Bad Wow's first <laughs> album. Nobody <laughs> is checking for Shad fucking Moss. Yet I got these ass munches on social media telling me that Bow Wow deserves a place in WWE. No, the hell he does not. Bow Wow doesn't even deserve a place in Windy City Wrestling. And I don't even think that's around anymore. Why? Because Bow First of all, Bow Wow's net worth isn't even close to Bad Bunny's. And Bow Wow's been in the game for about 15 plus years. But why can't he wrestle? No, I'm just saying, like, so what do you not even bring star power? We, Bad, Bad, Bad Bunny, Bunny is bringing star power. But you see what we're doing right now? As what we're do doing this, our average views on whatever this goes on is probably gonna get a hundred views. Probably uh, like like a hundred views on uh, Instagram if, if it gets like tagged somewhere, if it gets viral, or like maybe two or three hundred on uh, YouTube, or mm -hmm. maybe even if we put it on Twitter or whatever, it's gonna be three hundred views. Mm -hmm. If that gets hot somewhere, people want to clamor. People listen. People love to do one thing. They love the underdog, and they love to see people fail. Why do we why do we like the LeBron Michael Jordan comparison when the comparison about the two players is different because they see the game different? I've never liked that comparison. They're two Boy, totally different dudes. But, but what but we like to but we like to compare the two. I'm saying. I'm not saying we as like all of us in this podcast. I'm saying, saying like society. Add, right. Overall, because their games are different and they're vastly different. But we like to see someone succeed and we like to someone see someone fail. People will watch TV to watch Bow Wow fail. I, I don't really watch to, Raw right I now. I don't need to see Bow Wow on on a WWE production to know that he's gonna fail. We don't know that they have. I, again, I, I, I that. put it to you like this: one of one of the people that discovered Bow Wow did a uh, splash off of the top rope that was literally the most atrocious thing I've seen in wrestling. <laughs> He's 50 something years old. I don't give you a put about Bad 10 years funny. on Snoop. Snoop Ball is mid 40s. Did a, did a splash off the top rope, and it was damn near perfect. Stephen Amell. He's 50 something. Stephen Amell uh, from Canada. That doesn't count. And you got my man on the ground scooting up, literally scooching up, and you still fuck the splash up. No, thank you. I don't need to see Snoop in the he ring. He was born in 71. I don't need to see Snoop in the ring. I don't need to see Bow Wow in the ring. You can accompany somebody to the ring, but nobody wants to see Bow Wow accompany anybody to the ring. Bow wow, be, couldn't, Bow wow couldn't accompany me to the ring. How about that? It's going to be worse than that time. Snoop is about to be. It's going to be worse than that time they used Snooki on WrestleMania 27. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. That was going to fuck up. Bow yeah, wow that's, what, that's what it's going to be, though. But he Snoop, can't. No. He can't Snoop even is, accompany me to the ring. No. Snoop, Snoop is about to be 50 years old. 50. And October 20. Okay, he's 50. Bad Bunny, like what? 30, 20, 28, 27, 26? Matters none. He it does about, matter. What do you mean? I'll, I'll, end this, I'll end this right here, right now. They told Austin Aries, we got nothing for you. You telling me they going to have some Bow Wow? Thank you, KG. Because he's Bow Wow. Mm -mm. No. What is what does the name Bow Wow mean in entertainment right now? You tell me this. I'm Are not saying like, I got WWE shirt. You, you going to the WWE shop buying a Bow Wow shirt? No, not me. But I'm, just, I'm listen. Let, let me let me explain something to everybody. WWE has been known to capitalize on someone's celebrity, whether it be small, whether it be big, 
whether it be minute, whether you're a C-plus celebrity or an A-plus celebrity, WWE will capitalize on you. WWE had Kevin Hart on there, and he lied about watching wrestling, and no one got on his ass for it. And No, he got booed that night. Uh, you go back and watch that shit. It's probably edited now. He got, they, edited, he got they edited it. They, they edited, edited the crap out of but him. But that's my, that's my point. Kevin Hart doesn't watch wrestling. And, and I'll, I'll boo. I'll boo him, too. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, bro. He's Bow Wow. Okay, I tell you what. I tell you what. You want to use Bow Wow? 24-7 title. Had K Quick, aka Ron Killings, aka R Truth, sitting right there doing commentary one day, and he rolls him up for the tag. And then Ron will win it back for the hundredth time. In the story. I don't want to see Bow Wow anywhere uh, around a WWE ring. That's what you and know. and I'm gonna also add to that. You said we well, love to see underdog, right? Who is this gentleman that's been monitoring our posts, been monitoring our episodes? Chris Van Vliet. What's his, how you say his name? Chris Van. And he, yeah, fleet. three guys from Chicago, right? No connection to anybody. Word I to the late to great, it. word to the late great Macho Man. Cream always rises to the top. Oh, and I'm, that's what I'm saying. You don't want to see him in WWE. I mean, I, it's, it's, nobody should want to see him in WWE. I don't want to see him in WWE because of the amount of talent they've let go who are thriving now. They let go of Sweetie You're going to bring Bow Wow and, you, and, and Enrico's being voted the most underrated wrestler of the year? Are you kidding me? Celebrity, bro. That's how the mix is. What's his what, what celebrity about? star power? I'm not, I'm not talking what's about it, what's the celebrity star power of someone whose net worth is like barely over a million dollars? Bow Wow hosted 106 in Park with Roxy. 106 in part, they fired AJ because he ain't rapped for free. Ow, wow, wow. Did was you see what I did show there? about kids? <laughs> <laughs> and shout out to Chris. I didn't mean to point you out and be like, yeah, he's watching us. No, that's not what that was meant to be. Sorry, I'm just man. simply stating that when you have a good piece of quality in front of the people, it might not catch fire immediately, but it's going to come across the right people. When it comes across the right people, everybody has a price, baby. That's all but, I'm saying. But what was 106 in Park? The 106 in Park was like, 106 in Park, the TRL was like the equivalent of preparing like Impact to WWE in terms of like the importance. That 106 in Park, what, eh? Bow Wow opens up a wrestling tee shop on Pro Wrestling Tees and actually does the work and shows that he's a fan and not just after a check, then maybe I respect him. Ronda Rousey got trashed until we saw her have a decent match. And everybody gave her her props. And they said, oh, shit, she's actually doing her thing. What's her best match, by the way, just to make this, just to have a what, what do y'all think is her best match? Shoehorn Charlotte. So Iris Series. Me too. I think, I agree with you. I think that won't be. I agree. I agree. Close second would probably be either against Bailey on Raw or Sasha at uh, Royal Rumble 2019. Sasha was world. But thank you, Kenny, for, and I love Triple H, but Triple H told Austin Aries he didn't have anything for him. Yeah, it's just too many. Yeah, it's too many people that they, Serena Deeb, like I said, she's killing it in AEW. Like they they brought her on as a trainer. You telling me about how I was going to be in ring performer? Jake, Rose no, he wants, and that's Rose the thing. Rose he wants to be an in-ring performer. He's not talking about being a mouthpiece. And if he Rose wants to do that, Diana Perrazzo, Joe exactly. Blair, extraordinaire in WWE. Now she's the Impact Women's Champion. Look, man. Yeah. First off, don't talk about my woman like that because they didn't know what to do with her. Because they, they I, I'm saying that's what they did. But they you want to adjust it? They were about to make her blonde her hair. They, I'm sorry, they were dye her hair. I'm glad hair. she left. I'm glad she left. I'm glad she left too. You know, we don't want people out here. With that machine in this guy complex, you already had Roman out here with the blue contact. We don't need no Italians out here with blonde but see, hair. But and that's my thing, bro. And and that's why my point resonates. Like, listen, if I'm being honest with you about the Bow thing, I don't want him to wrestle. One, I don't want him to wrestle because I know you're just making a case for it. I know. Right. I'm again. Yeah. But like one, the only person that I've seen wrestle after like never having wrestled before and being good at it was Diamond Dallas Page. And he got there a little late. But at the same time, he knew the business. Bow Wow doesn't know that. I know. I, I know. For, you watch wrestling, my nigga, but you know the business. Like you don't know how shit works. You don't know how to take your lumps. 
And that's not something you go, you're going to be okay with. Like, you're not going to be okay with jobbing for two or three years and then possibly getting an opportunity for like a mid-card title. You're not going to do that. Right. And that's, and that's my problem with that. He's thinking, I'm bad. Wow. Go ahead. Like, just look at the damn tweet he said. And it, and it says everything you need to know, bro. He, he, he was going back and forth with Chris Bay at Impact Wrestling. And shout out to Chris Bay. He said, yo, bro. I'm not talking to wrestlers no more. If A, they never been a WWE champ, B, made pay-per-view event, I don't know what the hell that means, C, had their own action figure. We not in the same league. Mm-hmm. Tell me when there's been a Bow Wow action figure, for one. Now, it could have been one. I'm not saying it didn't. But tell me when it's been a Bow Wow action figure. Tell me when he's main evented a pay-per-view. I know he's main evented a, a, a show, a little screen tour, uh, but that was when they were kids. And yeah, what now, WWE when, uh, champ is going to give Bow Wow the time of day? Other first than off, first off, you, you respect Bow Wow. He had two hits with two great R&B artists. Okay, with Sierra and uh, Omarion with the beads. Okay, so you respect that. All right, That's and the one with T Pain. I like that one too. And the one with T. Exactly. Bow Wow is in these streets with this music. Okay, now music. Bow Wow comes out to that Sierra you song. You gonna tell me about fifteen thousand fans not gonna try to hum it? No. No. <laughs> not at all. Hey, you not gonna hum that song about how it comes after that? I ain't never had nobody show me all the things. Why would he come out to that song, Joe? I, I see, oh, wow. Because he realized it's gonna piss people like you off. That's he why. Would, he wouldn't want to come out to bounce with me at least. I'm just saying. I'm gonna I'm just gonna move and we're gonna move on. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like this. Travel Chief got about four. Point one million followers on IG. You've been on there for two years. He don't even post that often. Bow Wow got like four point five million. Okay, whatever. That's that's nice. But the dude got about seven thousand some odd posts, which means he's been on IG since like he like the Godfather ages of IG probably. Bow Wow. Nick ain't checking for Bow Wow. Listen, bro. Bow Wow was not. Listen, after the second, the third Bow Wow album, we were supposed to be done with Bow Wow, but he keeps finding a way to come back up. That's why I don't doubt him, bro. I don't doubt, listen, I hated Bow Wow since he first came out music-wise, bro, because I didn't think he was talented. I thought JD wrote most of his stuff. I didn't think he had a lot of ability. It Shout out to the brat. She wrote a lot of it. Right. And T.I. Right. wrote a lot of it. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I just certain things about him, just like, but I can't doubt him because he finds a way. I don't know how he ended up on that show for hip hop stars that had famous dads. Like, he didn't even know his dad like that, but he was on that show. But listen, okay, let me explain something to you right now. Let me let me just say it again something right now. What's what's the name of what's the name of the Simmons? What's the name of the Simmons daughter? Uh, which one? Uh Vanessa or uh, uh what's the one everybody wants? The one Ange- Ange- Angela Angela. Angela. Bow Wow was talking to Angela Simmons. He was at trying his, to talk to Angela. Angela wouldn't give him time period. today. At his broke his period, he was talking to Angela Simmons when he was broke. She he tried, he didn't get her. I don't believe that's what I don't Well yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That's what like Bow Wow. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, you're right. He didn't get it. But still, he didn't get it. I bet you I would have got it. What? Angela Simmons? I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about something. Move on. To that's how you move it on, KG. Like, yeah, that's how we pull down a rabbit hole. We can keep that in like group text. Anyway, uh, NXT, as we were drop. referencing earlier this week, or earlier this episode, sorry about that. Um, I thought. As Joe mentioned, like the carrying cross in Central Escobar Street Fight was pretty damn good. What about you, Tim? Say that one more time, KG. My apologies. The Santos Escobar and carrying cross, I was uh, piggybacking off of Joe. I thought that was a damn good street fight, actually, especially um, for the size difference between the two guys. You know what? It was, and it was good to see that size difference thing. I know we've kind of touched on that before in terms of the cruiserweight title. And I've said the suggestion, I can't remember if you guys have either agreed or disagreed, but I've, I've said that I think that cruiserweight title should be used more so in the capacity of how Impact has that uh, X division title, where mm-hmm. you could see a, a larger guy go after it. It doesn't have to be of a certain uh, uh, weight class to go after it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is where WWE is headed with that per se, but just the fact that they tried that and attempted that. And it's just, it's not like it's something brand new. Like I just said, it was on impact and we've seen, we would see that back in the days, you know what I mean? Like ruthless aggression era or uh, attitude era. 
where you would see a, a smaller guy or anytime Brave Mysterio gets in the ring yeah. with a Batista or, or a Triple H or whoever. But um, I, I enjoy it. You know, uh, I, I I left it kind of confused. I'm like, is carrying a tweener now or? You know, because Escobar is supposed to be a heel. I'm like, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know where that was going, but you know, maybe y'all can clarify that for me. But I enjoyed it though. I think um, overall, Karrion Cross is one of those people that's going to be like the Triple H of the world, where you really don't care what he is as long as you get to watch him just be who he is. Um, because Karrion Cross's character is just phenomenal. And, and just watching him and Pablo Escobar go at it and noticing the size difference and also noticing that Karrion Cross took some fucking bumps too. Like, he wasn't, like, dominating that whole thing. He got his ass kicked too. And Which is different because we've been basically seeing him dominate. And he made it believable. And he made it also one of those things where it was like, oh, shit, is this his first loss? You know what I'm saying? Like, Karrion Cross is... The fucking truth. Like he, he, I, 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 I have, I respected him first, but now I'm like, yo, I like Harry Cross though, and I really hope that no one touches him at Raw or SmackDown. Like I really don't want anyone to touch him at all. Like I don't want any of that. Because I would really, like honestly, would I love to see Drew and Karrion Cross go at it? Oh, like a half hour, thirty five minutes, just violence. Yes, please do that. But that was one of the highlights for NXT, also with uh, Zia Lee. Zia Lee was a highlight for me, too. But um, what I wanted to talk about earlier, too, with that, uh, Casey Cantanzaro. I think I said the name wrong. I'm sorry. No, it's Let's just, just go with Casey. Casey. Yeah. Bro, if she gets a legitimate, like, story with this, and they actually give her time in the ring, I think she might be somewhat good at like really good at this. Cause she was good in the tournament with the May Young tournament before she could do, but she they made her a gymnast and you know, she flippy, flippy, flippy stuff, flippy stuff. But yeah, I'm with this bro. Like I'm, I'm with her. I'm with her, uh, Caden is it? Is her name Caden? Caden Carter. Caden Carter, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. And I believe you just say her surname correctly. I think it is Ken Kenzaro. Kenzaro, I did, I did, yes. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Also, welcome back Adam Cole. The real Adam Cole. Bay Bay. Yeah. I was out of say, I'm, real. Yeah. I will say I was a little surprised they had him turn on Roddy. I thought they were going to be like the heel duo, possibly, where he acts as like his henchman. They, and they could still do that. I'm not saying they won't do that. But, um, you yeah, know, I'm definitely looking forward to him and Kyle O'Reilly. They'll probably do some type of triple threat or fatal four-way, which I'm still down for, too. Uh, the only thing with that is, are they, how long are they going to put off carrying Crouch, Charles, and Finn Balor? That's my only question. And it's not necessarily, oh, it's a bad thing that's happening. I am just curious how long they're going to put that off, because they're definitely going to do a fatal four-way the next takeover. Take over Tampa or whatever that I call it. And I'm guess I'm down for that. It should be pretty good. Um Doug Algano actually had a good match with Dexter Lumis too to open the show. I think probably he's one of his better showings uh, for Lumis. What do you think about the booking of Dexter Lumis thus far? I mean, so it's, it's a new gimmick type thing where it's like we don't know it's it's one of those things where you can, I'll give you credit for that comparison. He's kind of like with his crazed look in his eyes, he's like a combination of like a gold dust and like a cane or something. So it's definitely something we haven't seen before. Joe, what about you? I honestly think that they're booking Dexter Loomis perfectly. They don't make him look too strong, they don't make him look too weak either. And, and it's a build with him. That's why I'm saying like NXT gets development, like they get, they understand how to develop a character. Because remember, it was Dexter Loomis, and then he was like helping out the dream, which I have no idea what the fuck he is. And then um, on top of that, watching him wrestle, he can go. So I have I have no idea what his history is. Like I have no idea if he's always wrestled and been in indie wrestling or what. He was on Impact at one point. I don't remember what his name was though. I don't remember it either. That's what I'm like. I, 
this 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 character and this gimmick and everything he had puts together is, is perfect because he beat Johnny Gargano clean which if you look at it isn't too bad but still he had to, he had to struggle because he had to get the you know the who and everything else but it was still good bro it was good like it was still good like and, and that whole thing like that, that whole thing is something I'm excited about just because Dexter Loomis's development is what I'm excited about because those are things when you develop three or four characters that are like main event stars, a la Rock, Austin, Triple H. You can, you can go anywhere. You can go anywhere. But with them having Gargano, Champa, and then Cross, and still developing some of their stars, well, I think Zia Lee might be some decent if she actually works on more than just kicking people in the leg and hurting people, like actually like develop a good suplex. More than three moves. He has a great look. So, oh, oh gosh, he, he has that. No, no, I'm not saying. It, it, no, I'm talking that, about that. Joe. He said three oh, moves. Oh, <laughs> I was just saying. You know, she has a good look uh, as, as far as the gimmick. You know, she's an attractive woman as well. But you know, a, a nice suplex would add to that resume. Hey and, man, she got she got the lady from the that Grudge thing. on her side. Yeah, that too. That that always helps. See, but that's my thing. Like, okay, for me, if you want to win. Us over. You got to you got to bring something to the table. Look, Roman had no disrespect to Tribal Chief. Roman had drive by, two man punch, spear, small and drop. He had four. He had four groups. All right, he had four. The guillotine is five. And then I don't know if he does anything else. He doesn't, and I think that's the problem some people had with Roman. It's like he'll do newer stuff with people like Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan. You'll see new moves from his arsenal, but it's just like that's why people say he got carried so often. But um, like the Tilt World Slam he did against Seth Rollins, uh, he, he sprinkles that in every now and again. That one-handed, uh, that one-armed, uh, excuse me, uh, power bomb that he does, Rick and, and then like. I think against Cesaro too, he did like that Niagara bomb where it looks like he's going for the Razor's, razor's Edge, but he turns it into a power bomb. I thought this yeah. stuff, they could have changed it to his finisher. Uh, but like Joe said, you want to see character development from people. Uh, now, one thing I'm interested in is to see if they actually have Tony Storm take the strap off EO. I don't think she will. I mean, I wouldn't. I'll give a more definitive answer next week because then they'll have the match the week after, if I'm mistaken, because they said two weeks from last Wednesday. Uh, I'm excited for it though because now you've seen them develop more as personality wise. Because Joe has been more familiar with them, obviously, he pays more attention to indie wrestling than we do. But right. um, I do feel like you see more of a character development than them just being happy to be there, which, you know, which in the sense they were not that they weren't busting their tails to put on a great match at uh, Evolution, the all women's pay per view. It's just you, it's more character development now from them just being introduced to the brand. I think overall, I think overall, like for me, to watch Roman when he first came back to now is a totally different Roman to watch him. Cause come on guys, come on yo. Like to watch Roman when he first got here and they put some contacts in his eyes and then to watch him have like some attitude and you like, yeah. And then to watch them write for him and have him do like suffering, succotash, and all the other dudes, like, what the fuck? Tater tots. Tater tots, yeah, like, what the fuck is that? And then watch like Dean and Seth and everybody else kill and, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just different. But now it's like, honestly, this, this version of Roman, I would love to have with a fan reaction, like a live crowd reaction. Because I, I don't think he gets booed. I'm not going to boo him. No. You would only get booed if they put the the right baby face against him. And by the right baby face, I mean someone by the stuff he was doing with KO, I would believe it'll been like 60-40 in favor of KO just because they finally got KO to get his actual personality back. Yeah. Where they weren't just doing whatever with him, where they actually had a purpose. Um Cesaro, if they actually went with that few, Cesaro would get cheered just because people have been clamoring for him to get pushed. But the stuff with Jay Uso Roman definitely would have been the baby face reaction wise. Even though he was that was his like most obvious healing up of all the last five, six months that he's been a heel. 
that was his worst heel antics. And he definitely got jeered just because nothing against Jay Uso, but like nobody was clamoring for Jay Uso to get pushed. Uh, the DB in this feud, if there was a crowd, I guess it would be 50 50. That's because people fuck with DB so tough as far as his in ring ability. And he's gone, you know, he's made numerous strides on the mic. So. Does he not have the right opponent in edge to get booze? No. If it, I'm going to be honest. If the crowds are on, they'd be in favor of Roman. They would not cheer edge. I'm not going to say even get no cheers, but it would be the equivalent of. Mm, I want to say like Mark Henry, Randy Orton. Night of Champions, if that's a good comparison. Because if you listen to that pop and Mark Henry won the title, that was like a huge pop. I don't think people will be cheering Edge. Not that Edge can't go, but it's it's one of those things. So you're talking WrestleMania, and while it sucks for Edge 10 years ago, he had to drop the title. I mean, people are also like one of those things. Where it's like, I think people are getting tired of people just coming back and them not using people that have never touched the title. Like, Edge is an 11-time champ. Yeah, he doesn't need it again, bro. Like, and You don't even need the spot again, let alone the title. Even if even if they do a dramatic thing where, like, which I probably think they're going to do is where, like, Roman is, like, messing with Edge's neck or anything crazy. Like, they would have to have, like, Roman, like, choke out Beth Phoenix in front of Edge. Yeah. And we're going to get a crowd, so we'll be able to see. They, they're, they're supposed to be... It's not gonna be full capacity, but they said there's gonna be like thirty thousand. So we'll see. I'm good with that. Hey, he's he's not he's not the right opponent. You can you can totally see a scenario uh, where Beth comes out there where uh, you that know that might get cheered though. Our crowd's pretty crowds are in pretty dark. Yeah, but I you, mean they're gonna be pretty hyped, man, because they haven't been able to go to a WWE event in in quite some time. So, but I think just. Yeah, it's it's a slippery slope because I, I I I agree with y'all where I think this now, Roman's cool now he's cool to like now people didn't like him while all this stuff was going on that was out of his control but right now him him killing it as a heel a, a, instead of acknowledging it the way they do with Paul Heyman like Paul Heyman gets booed booed out of respect for him being Paul Heyman you know in these type of scenarios the heel will get cheered. But I'm just trying to see if it's any type of, is it anything Roman could do leading up to WrestleMania that'll get him that heel heat? They're using Edge in the wrong spot. And I understand we won't get it, but you could have just, they could have just flat out, I don't know how you would have got there, but since Edge was an exclusive to a brand since he came out out of the blue, you could have gave me Edge and DB at WrestleMania. You could have gave that spot that Edge has against Roman. You could have just finally gave Cesaro his push. It's, I mean, everybody's been saying as long as we If you want the reaction to be like a holy crap moment, because at that point, Roman would have had the title for about six and a half months. You can't say they would have cut it short because he won the title at the end of August. You're exactly <laughs> right, sir. You're exactly right. Because in order for it to be like you really, if they were clamming for that reaction, you would really have to put Cesaro. Like that would have to be the thing. Or Shinsuke. Like you would have to put Cesaro. Or, or Shinsuke, that might not at or, this point. Or I think it, it Those are the only three be, I can uh, see that. I think at this point it would have to be either DB or Cesaro. I don't even know if it would be DB though, because you got people they're tired of the yes stuff. I don't care for it. I can look past it. I mean, I think that's over and done with the yes chance. Personally, people still do it. It's not to the extent it was seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Where if you just look at that entrance against Triple H, it was insane uh, with the yes chance, but. I think it would be 50-50. I can see where you're going with that, where like the fans wouldn't be mad at it. They would, I'll compare this to that. It would be like Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano reaction at TakeOver New York, mm-hmm. where it was like probably 55-45 for Adam Cole. So it would probably be like 55-45 Roman. Even though I said 50-50, I think it more like towards Roman, just because of this character has just been ridiculous as far as connecting with the personality wise, yeah. gimmick wise and stuff. And that's why it pissed me off. I mean, you kind of, kind of like that as much as I like kind of a fan of Warren Cassidy, we kind of transition to AEW. Um, 
I would have said Roman or Brody Lee should have been gimmick of the year. And out of respect, they could have just gave it to Brody. Not even just because he was killing it with that with that uh, gimmick, Mr. Brody Lee. I mean, come on. Like, if you're going to go all AEW for most of your awards, give it to Brody Lee for best gimmick. He should have got it anyway, not just because the man passed. He should have got it anyway. Who got best gimmick? Orange Cassidy. Mm. I'm not saying I don't like the gimmick. I'm a fan of the dude, but you saying best gimmick? Come on. I think, I, I think I think overall in AEW, the best gimmick. I would have said Brody D. Lee. I stand with that. I'm not even going to... I'm not saying you can't feel different. That's why we're hot taking the drill here. <laughs> but I just... I'm, I'm in here. No, I think even... I'm in here being reckless if, today. <laughs> I think even if Brody didn't pass, you would have to give him best gimmick just for what he did do during that time in AEW, what he was able to accomplish in that short bit of time. Um, not that Orange Cassidy is killing it, not that he isn't a, a, a main attraction over there, even though he's not being utilized in that just yet. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of I agree with KG on that. I mean, you, I would even said Eddie Kingston, you know, the whole disgruntled wrestling gimmick that he had. I cannot agree with you two on this one because uh, all right. You took you took a dive in that mayhem mimosa match. That's what it is. <laughs> I probably did. I probably did. Okay, so for me, best gimmick is having a bow wow juice. A gimmick, a gimmick. <laughs> A gimmick for me is something. A gimmick for me is something that is not really character based. It's like um, when WWE used to do like Earthquake, the Bushwhacker, uh, just some, just just something like flimsy, like just something flimsy. Like you just he has a garbage shirt on, the Garbage Man, like it's just something like that. Mr. Brady. Max Moon, that's what you're going to go next. You're out of control today, sir. Yeah, yep, I am. Yep, yep. And that's, and that's the other thing about Vince. Like, Junkyard Dog was a dog, in, in, you know, for lack of a better word, in, before he got to WWE. And then you give him this shit gimmick. Same yeah, I heard the same swag. thing about, I heard the same thing about One Man Gang, too. I heard he was killing it in the Southern Territories. One and Man Gang came. was fucking nuts. And I didn't believe it to, to one of my homeboys. Shout out to uh, my homeboy Danny. Show me one of his like highlight tapes of him outside. He was fucking nuts. Like, did you yeah, watch like, Young Rock? Did you see how cool Junk Yard Dog was just sitting there? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you turn that into that? Because when you're, because because when you're a, a rich billionaire playboy. But it's pre-billions. Oh, I'm sorry, rich millionaire. Uh, the thing of it is, is that when you get to a certain level, you realize that uh, gimmicks can sometimes make you some money. So this is this is the way that I think the machine sees it. All right, so you have your uh, bottom tiers, mid tiers, top tiers. All right, you give a mid tier a seamless weak gimmick, an okay gimmick. You give your bottom tiers just the bottom of the barrel, and you give your top tiers all the good stuff. A la, for example, now. Mid tiers would probably be Sami Zayn, mm -hmm. uh, Apollo Cruz, and um, who's killing it? Who's killing? It? Oh my God, it, Apollo Cruz! You sir, you deserve a W O W, my guy. You deserve one. You deserve one, bro. Um, he got one. I gave it to him last week. Did you? Yeah. Good. Give him to him this this week too. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, like seriously, but like he's seriously. Killing it. And then the top tiers, your Romans, your Drew, who again had to go to the Indies to discover how to be re to really be Drew McIntyre. Preface that again. Yeah. The top tiers. Bottom, Rico's, who honestly is probably one of the best in ring talents that you have there. And um, your, your Chad Gables, who honestly has a big personality at NXT, but all of a sudden you turn him down. And, um, God, I hate saying this. I think they're putting the new day at the bottom tier too. Mm. But um, that's who that that's who you put in there 
and that's who you put in there for that type of stuff. Uh, that's what that that that's what he does. And I think he prioritizes by what is that gimmick going to sell me? How much money is that going to make me? What, what's my bottom line with that? Because he's not putting it in there by talent, but AEW is. Ray Phoenix and Kenny Omega, I guarantee you get to pick who they face. Same thing with Hangman Page. I guarantee you they get to pick and really get to figure it out. But if you get somebody like um, Eddie Kingston, who's probably your mid. Uh, Jungle Boy is like a tweener, probably your top in your mid, but you're still trying to develop him. The bottom would be like, I don't know, uh, what's, his, what's, what's, what's the dude from American Nightmares? The trainer dude. <laughs> Who you barely see? Who you barely see. Are you talking about QC Marshall? QC, QT Marshall. QT Marshall is your bottom. Because the dude he faced had a mullet, like a full on mullet with the widow's peak. Sonny yeah, Kiss, and he can actually wrestle. Yeah, QT Marsh can wrestle. He can go, but he's got to develop these guys. Because you got to, you got to, you got to pick, you got to pick from the crop. They have a bunch of power lifters, a bunch of guys that are very much so great athletes. But developing a character in wrestling is just going to be different over there. Like it's going to be one of those things where it's different. Like they'll have a bunch of like great road stories and the great things from that. But that'll be that'll be that'll be about it. So it's going to be different every time. Um, but that's different the way that Vince sees the AEW sees. Junkyard Dog before him was probably one of the most underrated wrestlers previously because he had some great matches with a bunch of people and brought the best out of everybody, but that's what happens, man. Like, that's how Vince sees. He he's not going to put you in there for any ability. Same thing, and I'm starting to see Triple H not doing that shit either, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest real quick. This is why hey, made this is a wonder. Like a preview of the Golden Shovel Machine, this dude found a way. How how does he find a way to put? And it's like tells you that politics are just way out of place in the WWE or WWE back then. You put the WWE Championship on Sergeant Slaughter, but Teddy Yassi never touched the WWE Championship. Go deeper than that, bro. Go go deeper than that. I think about the minds that didn't get the WWE Championship. Oh no, there's more than one, but he like the glaring one for me. As far as someone who had a gimmick who could talk and wrestle, but there's others too. But like I think he's he's the top of the mountain for me as far as like heels that didn't touch it. But you obviously have your Mr. Perfect, you have Roddy Piper, you have Jake Roberts. But for me, I think he stands out the most. Me, the Mick Sheen kills me because Bray Wyatt got it at Elimination Channel. Do you remember that pop that he got? Yeah. Okay. How long did he touch it? Like a month. Right. Who beat him? Orton, right? Mm hmm Orton didn't need that. And what, they had a weak-ass match, right? Stupid-ass match. Hey, yeah, that was probably the worst match on the card. Other than that, it was a solid WrestleMania. Right. The year before, though, he had a match with Undertaker, and he kind of brought the Undertaker back out of his shell to be more creative in the ring. But he, he brought him out like, yo, like, like this. we was like, okay, this is the next step for Bray Wyatt because he's gonna be like that role now. Like he's gonna be that eerie member. But you give him time for a month, then you have a revamped character. He does his theme. You have Luke Goldberg, who doesn't need another championship. And everything like like those type of things are what like I can't respect him for in terms of his booking. And then on top of that, Jake the Snake Roberts, constant Intercontinental Champ, but Luke. Not having to touch the WWE title after that after that crazy ass feud with Macho Man, one of your top not one of your top heels. Hell, um, I'll go I'll go even further down the line and 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 do something uh, along the lines. Right now we have what's something more recent? Who didn't touch it? Um, shit, I can't think of his name right now. Come back to me. Come back to me. I think of, I'll think of the person. But speak name. speak. Well, we kind of speaking on past glory. You know what I mean? Uh, what did you guys think about it? Because we didn't, we kind of breezed past Raw. Um, what did you think about the regurgitation of the black goose coming out of Orton's mouth, a la Papa Shango, Ultimate Warrior? I thought it was the new strain of COVID. I thought that was the new strain of COVID, too, bro. I thought that was what that was. Like, oh, he, should, he got that shit. He got that COVID shit. He fucked up right here. Orton said, oh, man, Sa Sasha's in Star Wars? Let me go and get my, my acting up real quick. Uh, I mean, they're doing the feud better. 
I'll say that than they they did four years ago. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't. We'll see where they go with it. At this point, it's, I'm almost over Bray Wyatt at this point. Not, and the reason is because if you either push the dude or don't, just stop with this. Because there's as many chances they've pushed him, some opportunities they have to push him. At this point, it's just like go to somebody else. We're not going to fully commit. I'm tired of it. Tired it's of been it. it's been going over for almost eight years. Either push the dude legitimately as a cornerstone or step aside and play someone else in that position. That is your cornerstone though. You you you've thrown everything you possibly could at him to make him fail and he's knocked the ball at the park every They time. don't believe in him clearly because he only had out of his three runs the championship. We just said he touched it a month maybe. The second one was a week. No no, no. the second run was when Goldberg ended. That was about ninety days maybe. I wanna say maybe a little bit longer. I know he took it off Seth. Then he touched it a week. When he beat, like, they let's, clearly something something's not clicking. Let's establish let's establish WWE cornerstones right now. They're gonna do Roman, they're gonna do Seth, and then who's the other two? Charlotte. Ooh. Well, like obviously Charlotte, because she's like the women's division is just Charlotte, Sasha, Bailey, and possibly Becky when she comes back. Maybe. Well, Lex is up there too. They they've been more versatile with the women. Uh, the guys I just say would probably be Seth Roman and Bray, as far as like the newer generation. That's Drew's up there now, obviously, but but that's who you should rely on. Like Bray's been solid throughout. He's giving you good shit with the Fiend. He's giving you shit with Bray Bray Wyatt. He's created and be able to help other people prepare their career, a la um, Braun Strowman. Who, let's be honest, I I still I like. But I didn't really believe it until he was in the Wyatt's. Uh, just overall, bro, like, I don't feel like, like, like you, don't, you don't really have anybody else that you really believe in that you can say for a shadow without a shadow of a doubt. That's someone that you actually believe because you don't believe in Rico. You don't believe in Aleister Black. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa will not come up because they do not want to be around you and do not want to work with you. Um, you're limited in your choices. Just choose your big three and go from there. That's tough. That's, that's, tough. that's the thing. Though. I don't even think they need a big three. They got to kind of be more versatile because if the fans at one point or another have turned on all those dudes except for Bray. And even I mean, they the, kind of had a big three all the time, though, if you really go back and look at it. Attitude Era, Stone Cold, Rock, Triple H. Uh, ruthless aggression, Triple H, Kurt Angle. Um, who else would you say? Maybe uh, Eddie Guerrero. But even after there, they kind of botched that because Foley was more over than Triple H, and that was a whole agenda to push well, Triple H. Not that Triple H wasn't talented. That's the agenda, though. The agenda was to get Triple H push, put over. So that's why they kept for it, and that's the part a lot of us don't want to acknowledge either. Like people that love love Triple H, they want to keep that little secret put to the side. Like I never you know they forced Triple H to no, they some throws too. I said that a while ago. I'm like, Trip, that three year stretch. That's why I stopped watching Raw. With no, that evolution. That's but that's what but that's why they like, but that's why on one of them uh untold <coughs> on, on the untold, he was like, I wouldn't have got pushed the way I got pushed if I hadn't had to work with Mick. Because Mick got me over the top or whatever. Mick Foley got him over the top or whatever. But at the same time, the Ruthless Aggression era had so much good talent. That the top three is kind of muddied and muddled up. Because when Triple H was out of shape, it was like. They still had a top three. They had Triple H. Case, Kurt, case they, had Triple H they had Triple H, Kurt, and Brock during the Rookie Congress. And that was their top three. That was their top three. So they, they've always had a big three. It's but just they've about also, utilizing them properly. But they also interge interjected people. But I feel like SmackDown, even though those are the two that were like their cornerstones to the main event, I also feel like. If something wasn't clicking, they kind of like gave up on it and they didn't keep on like trying to push that same person. That's right. Uh, because, and who's an example of that? Uh, I'm not saying this dude was as good as character, but like you you saw the people they tried to push and like it didn't work. Gene Snitsky. Oh, that's not working? Goodbye. Uh, Heidi. I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't working? Goodbye. 
Uh, it's just at one point you just say enough with the Bray Wyatt stuff. I mean, he has the character. Don't get me wrong. He has a great mind for the business. But outside of Daniel Bryan, how many great matches could you say Bray Wyatt had? Legit singles matches. Maybe that last man standing against John Cena. Hell in a Cell with... Uh, that was good. Was it, was it great? Hell in a Cell. Especially when it was on the same card with that Taker and Brock Lesnar Hell in a Cell match Hell in comparison. Dean Ambrose. That wasn't even against Dean, though. That was... He interrupted that. Because that was Dean versus Seth. What? When that, he came uh, out with the Tupac collar, <laughs> was that last? <laughs> was that last? That ladder match or TLC when he was with uh, Dean Ambrose? Uh, are you talking about with the exploding TV spot? <laughs> no, not that one. Not that one. Uh, there was a match with the this. ambulance match against him was solid, but it wasn't like I wouldn't say great. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's everybody. That's you know, that's subjective to say what was great and what wasn't. I just, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of over. And maybe it's more so the machine than anything, but I'm just kind of over the whole Bray Wyatt craze at this point. Um, so what you're saying is you don't want a Bray Wyatt t-shirt for Christmas? No. Or for your birthday. Your birthday will be here first. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know because I feel like he hasn't got the opportunity to be able to do this stuff. Like, I feel like they always put him in a place to do stuff and they expect him to be able to knock out the park, but they will not give him the ball to do it. Like they'd be like, all right, that's enough. That's enough. We don't like we don't we don't like what you're doing right now. That's enough. But that's kind of what I'm saying though. That's that's trying to invest in other people then if that's the case. And stop putting them in those positions. It's been eight years. Okay, so you got the pencil. Who are you putting in that place? Anyone. I mean, you got Cesaro, they're not doing anything with. Ricochet. I mean, See, wait, I like that's, that. that's easy to just say anyone, right? What 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 up and coming talent would you put in that spot? Who hasn't gotten pushed? Like I said, yeah. Cesaro jumps out right away. He's not with the company anymore, but and obviously, uh, I mean, they have anything for EC3. We, I mean, it's too many people that they didn't do anything with for to keep putting this guy in the main event spot and then just like, oh, you know what? It's not working. It's mm -hmm. not working, and then just it's enough then. Just move on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I'm penciling people in and I got to do Raw, and I got to do SmackDown, and I got to do NXT, I'm not going to touch NXT because NXT is already solid. You already know who it is. It's Champa, it's Champa, it's Gargano, Cole. Boom. Bal Bal uh, Balor. Balor. Obviously Balor. I'm going to go from there at that point. And then if I'm doing Raw right now, McIntyre, Lashley, Almighty, and uh, Rico. Shout out to KG for giving Lashley his props too. Three, three, three A, three A is Mustafa Ali, and I'm revamping Retribution. I'm changing out their whole gimmick. I'm not putting them in masks. I'm going to put them. If it's Retribution, I am going to make it more so like a Hitman type complex where they're more so. Not like right to censor where they're in like the nasty ass, ugly ass, uh, weak ass attire. I'm going to put them in there with like a type of a hitman type thing where they're trying to just take out everybody, you know what I'm saying? Just like a la Agent 47, that type of thing. I'm going to revamp, revamp that. I'm doing SmackDown. I'm going to do Roman. I'm pushing Cesaro. DB is on his way out. So he's going to be the new Sean. So I'm not going to push DB. Um, I would try and either get Alistair in that in that regard or whatever or i would switch up the game and use chad gable that's my workhorse because i just use him as a workhorse for great matches or whatever at that point and the only reason why i use chad gable as a workhorse for great matches like i would put him in like 15 20 minute matches against like great ass talent and just say hey have a good fucking match that's it have i don't need you to talk right now have an amazing ass match. Night after night, after, I'd put him against, this, I, I put him against like the uh, the DBs. I put him against um, the Dolphs. I put him against all those guys that can really go in the ring or whatever and go from there. Um, but hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. I, mean, here's my, I mean, here's my problem with the machine though, is just like they flip so many guys who are actually over who don't get booed. Like, AJ didn't get booed throughout, and he had it for over a year. You can't, you're not going to find many WWE champions 
poor baby face for a year that don't get booed. Oh, you know what? We're gonna flip AJ back again and heal. That's it. That's, that's too much. That's too much shit. It's too much. Like it's too much back and forth. Like it's too much. Stay here. We'll develop something else for you differently and go from there. Like it's too much. It's too much over and under. Because the fiend's supposed to be a baby face right now. That's the thing. So why, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I said AJ was over. And even if you don't want to keep having the smaller wrestlers, quote unquote, be in those positions. But like you said, Drew, Ricochet, I mean, they're not doing anything so many times. I mean, they're not doing anything with Keith Lee. And, because, and the reason why they're not doing anything with Keith Lee is because the machine would open his eyes to other possibilities. That's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah. Give Keith Lee retribution. No, I'm not giving Keith Lee retribution. Yes. No, no Keith Lee's probably going to go to the herd business. He'll, he'll probably play. he'll probably take the title off Riddle. And the thing with Ricochet, if they want to flip him and put him with the herd business, I guess they could do a free bird rule where you have him and Seth sometimes or him and Sheldon or, you know, the three of them interchangeable. But you haven't really seen that since New Day, which was like six years ago. He go to SmackDown. I'm putting I'm putting Rico to SmackDown. I'm having them face Biggie and just see what they can do. What's the worst I can Star have? Ricochet off with Sammy. Yeah, start off with Sammy. And see, like, that's, that's that's the problem. Like Kenny always says that about the draft. Like you know, just certain inconsistencies with the draft. Like instead of just saying, "Hey, this person's hot," I'm gonna go put them on Raw. Like, no, keep people where they fit. AJ fit on SmackDown. There's no need to take him off the SmackDown. Uh, now, some people, they need to change the scenery. Okay, cool. But, you know, there's no reason why Retribution should have been on Raw. And you got Hurt Business over here on Raw. Like, it, 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 and they're they, they basically supposed to be the same thing. They're supposed to be that that heel stable group or whatever. And, and you're not utilizing them. They, just, they really just started using Hurt Business, if you want to be honest. That's true. That's true. That's what I'm saying. Like, her if business I'm, from his inception should have been presented like evolution. Her business, her business is just not being utilized. Honestly, if I were them right now, I would keep the tag titles on them. I would have Bobby get his USA title back. And then I will also make said go back down to NXT and beat Pablo Escobar to get the 205 Live joint and somehow involve Keith Lee in the WWE Championship and win that shit and just have him just go bananas. Like, that shit would be crazy. <laughs> I'd be like, what? <laughs> like, that shit would be nuts. But um, that'd be crazy. I'm sorry. This no, is you good, you good. I think KG had the right idea as far as if you put Keith Lee with her business, you have him go after Riddle because Bobby's on the tear right now. They're they're finally utilizing Bobby in the proper capacity. You know, you don't have that monster Brock Lesnar presence right now, but you always had that right there in Bobby Lashley. We just never they never used him in that in that capacity. So for them to finally start utilizing him like that. And we're seeing shades of that Bobby that was an impact that was killing it. That's who you have go after that that WWE championship. Let's get uh, Keith on that slow deal with that mid car. Let's put him with these guys, and and being with a uh, 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 MVP is going to develop him so much further than who he is now, as far as character presentation. MVP owned that character, and that's why that character is money. That's why that character is believable. You know what I'm saying? Because MVP, MVP has always been good with this character. Hell, he was very underrated in the ring. That match he had with Ric, Ric Flair at Royal Rumble, that was underrated. The matches he had with Miz for the United States title, those were underrated. Those were good matches. Those were solid matches. With, uh, you know with Matt, too, right? Matt Hardy. Yep. Yeah, and with Matt Hardy, too. Like, those were good matches. Um, that, that, right that's now. a person who should... That, that, that's someone who, in my personal opinion, should have had an opportunity at a major title outside of like the mid card titles he was getting to change. He won the ECW world title, but if you really put like, when Matt Hardy was in shape, when you gave him a mic, and when you made him a heel, he was very believable. And when he came back and beat and beat Edge and lost that cage match too, he went fire. Put a title up, put the WWE title up for, for a little bit. 
That could make a difference. People want to see that shit. Yeah. I'll tell you this right now. Miz is in trouble because you know what happened last time Bobby Lashley feuded with somebody that had a high blown wife. All right. Let's, let's talk about SmackDown. <laughs> Now, well, before we go to SmackDown, don't you, you you got somebody you need to mention, but WCW? Oh. KG, can you please give me the uh, AEW music, please? AEW music? I'm sorry, can you give me the uh, jazz music, please? In WUNUA 95.5. Yes, Jay! 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 Yes, uh, for the women's roster, Miss Anna J. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. She's in dark order. Um, I honestly was looking for a WCW that week, and I realized I watched AEW Dark, and I realized how much better she's gotten. Because at first, they had her in this like magician outfit, like a legit, like a magician, like a magician did, outfit the with top hat and everything. Right, and I was like. That's, that's not going to go. But then they put her in dark order. And ever since then, she's uh, ramped up the aggression and ramped up the ability and just been doing her thing out there. So, shout out to Anna Jay. She's been amazing. I'm excited to see her growth. Um, I think with the right tools and the right tutelage, she can actually be able to kind of be a part of that revolution in AEW where their women are starting to come out strong. Um, I'm a fan, girl. I'm, I'm really a big fan. I really hope Anna Jay does very, very well. And uh, does her thing. She's honestly, I think she's in that tournament, right? That women's tournament they got going this Sunday. No, she's not. She's actually injured. She's out six to twelve months. She wasn't. They replaced her. Yeah, she's supposed to face uh, Britt Baker. Britt Baker will win that thing. But yeah, shout out to Anna J. You are WCW with hot take. Thank you so much. We love you. We're cheering for you. Please feel better. Get better. I think the only thing we didn't touch on SmackDown was really uh, Bianca choosing to face Sasha because we kind of mentioned SmackDown and here and there. I think with uh, and honestly with the uh, SmackDown thing, do we all do we do we all see that coming? Like we all saw that coming, right? Like that wasn't a surprise. That was, no, I wasn't. That was the right move. It's nothing against Oscar, but if if Rhea Ripley's, they already announced that she's going to Raw, so. I kind of predicted that a few weeks ago. I think that's going to be her WrestleMania opponent. Uh, it's time for the change of the guard. As we we just said, like, there's nothing that the women are killing it. You know, uh, Sasha Bailey, uh, Oscar, Charlotte, and Sasha. It's just, or Becky, sorry. I don't know how to mention her, but it's just, it's time for some new blood. Uh, I anticipate Rhea and Bianca Belair walk out as WrestleMania 37 with the women's championships. I think that would be ideal because at this point I mean I think it'd be, and I think it might be a good match with Rhea Ripley and uh, Oscar going at I it. think it should be a dope match especially yeah. if they like have possibly a little bit like more serious and I think she finally will because um Rhea is like of that Charlotte type in terms of height but the build is different like Rhea comes off as a complete beast and not that Charlotte doesn't she's in phenomenal shape as well it's just Rhea looks like on a whole other level like her and Bianca they kind of like are standouts as far as physique and impose like that ability to impose their will on other opponents. You mean you don't want to hear silly Oscar saying, Rhea, hey, hey, hey. Yes, uh, I want to hear that. I don't. <laughs> I need NXT. And I said this a while ago, and I don't even care if they don't have a championship. I know her contract expires uh, in, in a few months, but. At SummerSlam, I hope like maybe she re ups for another year or two. I need like NXT's Oscar versus R Ronda Rousey. I need that in my life. Woo! Give me that like at SummerSlam, like a non title match or something. I don't even care about championships. That would be nasty. Um, okay, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a hot take prediction here. The Friday after WrestleMania, Tessa Blanker appears on SmackDown. I mean, I could, I could see it. I, I think if she I don't appear on SmackDown, she'll appear on Raw. But she's so here's the thing: Raw. her star power appears more like I think like she'll get more of a chance on in WWE programming. Uh, I think the main roster needs her more than NXT. Uh, but with that being said, 
I feel like she's going to end up somewhere in AEW, and because they haven't touched on this either, and maybe they'll finally because maybe they just have too many stables right now. Eventually, people forget John Spears being managed by Tully, uh, Tessa's, Tessa's dad. So maybe you'll get all of them in a stable. Maybe that's what they're waiting to do to like while these other stables kind of like finish out their runs. Because the only heel stable that's really left now, if you think about it, is uh, Eddie Kingston's family with uh, Butch Blade and Bunny, and then Inner Circle. That's about it. Oh yeah, Team Taz. Sorry about that. Probably like my one of my favorite ones. I'm not gonna lie, about them. So they'll be around for a decent amount of time. I feel like Inner Circle, I don't know how much longer they'll be. Because uh, they haven't done the turn with MJF on Jericho yet. I think that's definitely going to eventually happen. They're just doing a slow build. Uh, so maybe... I don't know, I don't know if Eddie Kingston, that they're going to do that too much longer. But with that being said, that's kind of like, it'll be like the first stable where you have like that women's wrestler. Um... And their division is starting to come together too. I don't know if she's a, if Thunder Rosa is a, like if she's still technically signed to NWA or they're just with these partnerships or are they just. She signed to both, up? but it's it's some type of like partnership. Oh, well, partnership. Because I'm gonna say her and Tessa could have dope matches. Same with Serena Deeb and Tessa, and same with Kara Shida and Tessa. And Britt Baker's vastly improved. So even though like they probably wouldn't face each other, they'll probably bring Tessa in as a heel. But it just gives different scenarios, possibilities. I don't know. Um. Yeah, I don't know. What AEW show she probably needs her more, but last yeah. I heard, she was in uh, talks with WWE. She's gonna have to um, change her image a lot, though, because I heard they didn't want her. I heard her attitude is terrible. And that's uh, part of the reason why they didn't sign her when they had the opportunity before she went to Impact. What they've released thus far is that with Tessa, with her being gone for a while, originally the talks were to her to go to NXT. Because their women's division was so stacked that she wanted to be up with competition. Because if you guys remember Impact, she was the women's champion and the world heavyweight champion in Impact as well for a while. Mm -hmm. She was so good that she was wrestling guys too. Um, she doesn't, she, the, the talks have said she doesn't want to go to AEW because there's no one there for her that she thinks she's competing with. Exactly. So it's WWE, NXT, or Indy at that point. So. I don't know, man. I don't. Uh, and if she doesn't now, I, and I probably jumped the gun, but a little premature saying SmackDown because Becky has to come back at some point, and I think her coming back after WrestleMania might be that point, and she'll obviously be on SmackDown because Seth's right. over there, right? Uh, so you know, Raw probably or NXT will probably be more likely. But like you said, NXT it's it's got a stacked stacked division for women. And Tessa versus Raquel would be a dope match. Tessa versus anybody down there right now would be a dope match. Tessa versus Eo would be crazy. <clears throat> Tessa versus Ember Moon would be nuts. I don't give a damn what it is. Tessa versus anybody would be nuts. So wow, we we know she you know she's a piece of crap, but she can wrestle. She can wrestle. She just has bad views on stuff she knows in the back. That's all right. Are we uh, ready for the Golden Jello of the Week? Well, uh, we can touch on our AEW. We kind of did. We kind of did. Uh, I'm, this week? Yeah. Well, yeah, we did. I, you know what? Yeah. I didn't catch a lot of AEW. I'm, I'm playing catch up, so I'm only one, ep I'm one episode behind. But the only thing I know is Sting got his come up and or not come up, it's got his revenge. Brian Cage got his come up. It's, yeah. yeah. Sting got yeah, Stinger yeah. Splash and went old school, dropped him with the Scorpion death drop. So that's all I got. Uh, happy for the icon, man. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what they do. I thought I was expecting a cinematic match, honestly, with this point at this point with his age uh, and the, the injury he had. Should I say not even just his age? The injury he's coming off of uh, five years, five and a half years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Sixty. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we'll I, I expect Darby to be the, in the in the match the majority of the time. Um, yeah, but they definitely showed us. Sting could take that power bomb for a reason, so. Yeah. That's all I got, bro. Like, le legit, like, that's all I really got. Like, I didn't I want mean, to I'm interested in seeing how violent this exploding barbed wire death match, death match is for, like, it's my, with my and Omega. We'll see how, how much they let them push the envelope, because at full gear in 2019, they pushed the envelope with that, uh, 
non-sanctioned match with mm. the spots they were doing. So cool. that, that intrigues me. Um, uh, going to a few weeks back, uh, I thought Serena Deeb and Rio killed it. I thought that was one of the better matches on TV I saw that week uh, from the, what was it, the, so what's, what was last week? Three days ago, it was 23rd, was it? Oh, no, 24th. So the 17th, I think, like from that, from, so a couple weeks ago, yeah, I thought they had a pretty damn good match. But um, so I'm glad they're utilizing Pac a little bit more. Like I said, now that he's back with the COVID restrictions and everything. But mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of like my AEWs. So I kind of have for them. Um, I, I believe uh, Moxley and Kenta had their match. He cashed in to uh, go after his U.S. title. And uh, Yeah, I saw the Moxley was saying. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I guess it is that magical time of the episode for you guys. I always go last. I want to go first. What? You always go first. What do you mean? No, I go last and go in trouble every time. You know, you, you're making us that podcast. We're, we're the WWE hater podcast. That's, that's, that's why people come at our heads on IG. I don't, I don't think I have a WWE. Well, you know what? I'll let y'all go first. Then I'll, okay, correct. Go, go first. No, you get it. You get it. You get it. No, no, go, go first. first. No, no, go first. Go first. You know what I don't like? No. I don't like when these fans clamor for celebrities to come and be in a squared circle. I want you to acknowledge. No, I'm just bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I'm a, hey, look. Throw in the shovel of the week from, from old man Logan is going a bad way. Fuck it. Okay? I don't want you in the WWE ring. I don't want you in anybody's ring. You don't deserve it. Okay? You need some money, and it's okay. Everybody has a little rough patch. You out here, you're doing your shows, you're doing appearances to get your funds, and COVID is going. You're not making no music. That was your money maker. I don't know why you're not doing that. But, uh, no, stay away from WWE television, bro. I don't want you there. Maybe you can appear on the bump and be a host on there. But outside of that, I don't want you anywhere near Raw, SmackDown, or NXT. Hell, I don't want you on 205 Live, all right? And if you really want to be a wrestler, go take one of them goddamn chops from Walter and in the NXT UK and, and tell me if you still want to be a wrestler. Go get chopped up from him and then tell me if you want to be a wrestler still. And if you're not willing to do that, no. Stay away from me, big home. Uh, all right. I'm doing this prematurely because I said I was going to save this. Um, because I was going to do another WWE Golden Shovel, but I'm not going to do that anymore. I mean, uh, you did I, that the whole episode, so. I'm, I'm, my Golden Shovel goes to AEW's training facility for women. Right mm. now... AEW has a lot of talented women, um, but my issue is is that they don't have a style. Everybody has styles. There's a strong style. Um, New Japan has you know uh, Japanese strong style, strong style. Uh, it's a, you know, lucha, uh, British lucha. Um, you know what I'm saying? But AEW hasn't developed a quality style. For example. Uh, there is, uh, we made her a WCW, um, Velvet, I think La Velvet, Red, or Velvet. Velvet. Red Velvet. Velvet is very, very talented in terms of her ability to be able to just, you know, just athletically, she can make it look good, but they also signed, who was that power lifter that we, that, that, that was in there as well. What's her name? Do you remember? The Cuban, is she Cuban or uh, Puerto Rican? I think I know who you're talking about. I think she's Puerto Rican. I don't I don't know her name offhand, but I, I literally just watched that episode a couple of, uh, uh, the other day. Okay. And also on top of that, on top of that, it was like, uh, they have a lot, Britt Baker, Nyla Rose, Thunder Rosa, Celine Deeb, um, Swole. They have the talent. What's your style? Why have you not developed the style? The reason why we like AEW is because it's an alternative to WWE, which is a machine-based organization that has what it has and it's not gonna change up who it is. 
The problem with all these things, though, is is that with AEW having this talent from pieces that were in the May Young Classic. We expect you to utilize that said talent. I haven't seen Swole on TV for the past four or five weeks. I don't know when I last, I saw Britt Baker a couple weeks ago. Nyla Rose, I haven't seen in a while. God only knows when I've seen Selena Deeb. I've seen Thunder Rosa for a little while against, um, what's her name? I don't know, but yeah, but you have you have the WWE talent with like Tay Conti. You have all these things, come on, come on, develop. Develop, 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 develop. You don't have the time if you're acquiring all these pieces. It's time to build now. It's time to go. It's time to make your decision. Put your foot on the accelerator and go in a direction. Y'all taking too much time. Look, I love Kenny Omega. I'm sick and tired of seeing him right now. I don't want to see Kenny Omega right now. I don't want to see him. I want to see your women develop. I want to see your women's wrestling. I want to see Nyla Rose and their champion, whose name I keep forgetting. Carl Rashida. Carl Rashida. All that. Come on now, let's go. Give me something here, please and thank you. Go and show AEW, thank you. AEW Women's Talent Division, thank you. All right, um, being seen as this, uh, this is Black History Month. Um, I'm gonna take it back to comments from four years ago, somebody who was half African American and said that uh, she doesn't date black guys. Yeah, Arian Andrew, also known as Cameron, former Funkadactyl. Uh, yeah, that's what we're starting off with. You should be ashamed of yourself. Um, you have no ties to the black community officially. You're a flight risk every time you jump off the top rope. Uh, that's all I got. Cameron has a golden shovel that's trash. You can do better than that, no shovel. Uh, uh, you want me? Uh, this because we okay. We buried W so often. <sighs> you want another golden show? David Allen Meltzer. No, nope. gave. Nope, nope. You gotta save that one. You gotta save that one. Save that one. No, no he don't have. No, no. Yes, All you right. gotta save that because I can. This one's gonna be scathing. I can feel it. This one's gonna be scathing. You gotta save this one. This one you have to save. Trust me. If he saves this one, ah, oh, this one is. It's gonna be so good. I gotta okay. save it. Save it. So he's he saves this one, right? Right. But before we get out of here, okay. one thing we Machine didn't touch creative. on. We're not we didn't doing touch anything on Alistair Black. That's it. That's all I'll leave it at that. But hold on, hold on, hold it. We didn't touch on one Paul White, aka the big show, defecting from the machine and heading over to all elite. It's not 2005. Why should I care? <laughs> Sorry. It sounds heartless, but I'm okay. You want me to get real? This is like, remember that, that's those last like three or four years where they kept pushing Big Show for no effing reason? Remember how Big Show was in the main event of Survivor Series 2013 and nobody was asking for that? Remember how Big Show was in the main event of, what was it? Uh, no Way Out against John Cena. And nobody asked for that when, when Punk had the title for a year. He wasn't even main event. Remember how Big Show and Kane was eliminating everybody in the Royal Rumble in 2015, and nobody asked for that. Who want, at this point, like, why? Why should I want to see Big Show do anything? And he's a good talker. Don't get me wrong, but why? I mean, since the ruthless aggression era with this stuff against Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle, honestly, what's been the appeal of Big Show in terms of like a few that like, hey, hey I want to see Big Show. Because they're not signing him for that. That's not why they signed him. They didn't. They sign him. He got another ironclad contract. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't sign him. For, <laughs> they didn't sign him to wrestle. They didn't he sign is him though. Wrestle. They signed him as a chess move with WWE. Because who's been there as long as Cody has and knows all the new stars, knows the most new secrets, and who's talked to Vince the most? Paul White. If not the Undertaker, it's Paul White or uh, freaking. Uh, Kane, because he's trusted. Glenn Jacobs, right, right? Glenn Jacobs, and I'm and I'm I'm telling you right now, I'm positive that he told Vince. He's like, "Yo, bro, I'm defecting. I'm leaving." And Vince was like, "All right," because he because he knows all right too much. I'm telling you, it's a development thing. They got him on commentary. They got him there for a reason. 
it's for a reason and it's a big sign it's a it's a big i'm telling that's a big i know it doesn't seem like a big deal okay big chill, let me, uh, yeah wrestling wise we don't care but that show might change and that's exciting to see um, i'm gonna just say this big sure this upset because it's a netflix show that canceled first second of all um if he's not like if he's not a snitch or an informant so like get Vince sent to jail i don't think it matters so like AEW is like the only thing on tape, television. Huh. I don't know. I'm pretty sure the reason why they. I pretty. I'm pretty sure the reason why his Netflix show got canceled because it was a one and done. Period. It was one and done. We knew that. We knew that going in. It was one and done. You mean like, you know, don't? You don't want to see Paul White versus the Murder Hawk? No. I almost you don't. Off. You don't want to see Paul White versus the Powerhouse? No. No you way. mean you don't want to see no, Paul stop, we don't White want to see him against no one. No, we don't versus want to see him. Luchasaurus? We don't want to see him against anyone. The, like, I mean it, it was trending or whatever when he signed for a while, but I just think it's just like I don't know. I don't really think it's gonna make any difference whatsoever as far as like the grand scheme of things. I mean, it's it's a talking point that people can leave, I guess, but I mean it's not gonna matter unless somebody like John Cena or Brock Lesnar signs with AEW. Then it'll be like, all right, now we got something to talk about. While they're at the latter eight stages of their career, they still have appeal outside of wrestling, where they can bring in casual fans. Casual fans not checking for Big Show. I'm telling you, bro, that this this whole signing thing and this whole signing is going to change either how they wrestle or change how they see the actual ring. I'm telling you, it's going to be something vastly different, bro. Whew. All that means we're just finally gonna get that Big Show and Shaq match. Yeah. In the show, somebody in the show, in the show on that note, in the show, right now, right now, in the show, somebody in the show. It's time to go. Hey, 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 hey. All right, man, uh, we're gonna get uh, Barry, I'm sure, for this episode. <laughs> um, but make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Follow us on IG at Hot Take Wrestling. Follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Take. Um, that, that, that we are going to be on YouTube, of course, and on SoundCloud, uh, Anchor FM, Spotify, all those good things. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. Hit that notification button so you always know when we are releasing. Uh, yeah, man, um, this is episode number four of season three. We're going to try to get an interview with somebody one of these days. And uh, yeah, you, the cream always rises to the top. What do you guys think about that being the name of this this episode? Cream rises to the top. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we finally figured out where Pusha T got his yes from. Push. Yeah. All right. Let's come out. Already. So, Joe. Not right there. Not right here. Right here. Thanks for listening to the Hot Take Wrestling Podcast. The Hot Take Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by the Energy Network, a division of Energy Ain't nobody really than Gorilla, I said. Ain't nobody really than Gorilla. Ain't nobody really than Gorilla. Gorilla Tactics. Whoa, no, we bought action. Whoa, no, we not lacking. Whoa, that just not matching. Whoa, jump up on the road. Be a, be a face, no, we ain't tapping out, what, y'all ain't put this way, what?